this is just a short walk out with the GoPro 9. I drove down um, and parked up near, town, near um, Thompson's Park and decided to walk on the straight mile. So I parked, turned the corner and went down Home Rod Road. And as I'm going down Home Rod Road, on the left there, there's a little ginnel, which years before when I used to uh, live with my mum and then um, we used to use this as a shortcut. You could walk down it, but you couldn't drive down it. It's one way up. Looking down it, you see right down towards Forest Street where we used to live. And then you just turn left and go down some steps and onto the actual canal bank itself. And when you get on there, it's um, it's pretty um, load of rubbish down near the bridge. I suppose it floats down. Looking back towards where I came on. They've actually, um, just across the canal from where you come on, they built flats. And those flats are near the car park that um, Qualitex used to have. Now looking back along the bridge, you can see, as I walk along and looking down through the trees, I can start to see the streets that's leading down to Forest Street. But it's quite dense undergrowth now, so you can't really um, see it all. These streets have never changed. That used to be the um, British Legion Club and uh, the old back-to-back -back houses are there and the, the big backyards and so on. It's just as if it's never changed for a better part of 60 years. Looking along here, there's trees that you wouldn't expect to see. Um, you know, just standing, nobody's disturbed them for years. And as I'm walking along the bank, it just starts to get a lot clearer. Yeah, easy walk. And lots of people come on here. But um, dirty in the water. Lots of dirt. Yeah. It's uh, absolutely certain that you don't get run over with bikes on here because they come up behind you and in front of you and from the side. There's looking over towards. Um, St Peter's new centre, um, where the sports centre is, there's the big car park um, and TJ Maxx. Yeah, things certainly have changed here. We'll just do a pan now from uh, left to right, looking right over up Turf Moor right over up onto the moors where you drive over to Bay Cup and back up towards Crown Point and that side. Here we are stopping at the bridge and looking over um, at the main roundabout. We're actually on the Culvert Bridge. Uh, now we're looking along there. Them lads are up to no good. And back onto the main path, and it's good to know we've got a few ducks still here. It really is. I mean, sometimes it's pretty good just to uh, go back to where you were born and walk around the old places. I mean, Burnley's changed so much over the last few years. Uh, but the one thing that's been consistent is the Leeds Liverpool Canal that's run right through it and uh, particularly the straight mile. Here we're approaching uh, the steps that run down into the centre which um, give you a good overall view. Um, These are just a compilation of um, photographs taken on the GoPro 9. Um, simple um, 4K type photographs which managed to show for a very small camera great detail which is appreciated. <laughs> We 
Well, this is um, a barge going past. It's the widest one I've ever seen. Well, this is a view of Burnley from the Straight Mile, which is the Leeds Liverpool Canal. And this thing's here to see the, the Tesco, the large supermarket. And this below is usually a public car park, but it's now dedicated to being a Covid test centre and a lab. Opposite there stands the bus station, with up in the background up towards Westgate and up towards the Mitre. Then you move round, the bus station is quite large now, it takes a central part in the town and just through the trees there you can see the top of the um, key of it, alongside the building. This is it now filmed on two zoom. Same pan shot right across past the bus station. And all the bright coloured buses and straight across over the car park to the top end of the bus station. It's good to know there are a few ducks still living on here even though it's filthy at each end. Now here comes that um, super wide barge. I said those lads were up to no good so it looks like they've uh, flung some at over bloody bridge and run off. Typical isn't it, eh? you've got to be careful on here. Keep your eye on them, little buggers. But life goes on as the barge slowly makes its way towards us. It looks extremely wide, much wider than you normally see even the work barges. And it looks like there are people sat out on top, which um, is the way to go. That's the way to go these days. Relax. It's particularly wide boat, really. And they're enjoying themselves. There they go, that's the way to go. Four of them sat on top and two running the boat, beers in hand, off into the sunset. That's the way to go. Nice and quietly away. Well, I'll set off slowly walking back as I'm drifting along, walking along the path, back towards my car. I'm catching up because that's the right pace of life. You shouldn't be rushing. You should just be taking life easy. They certainly are. It looks like a day trip. There's about six people on it. It's a very, very wide boat. <laughs> Must be quite experienced, I suppose. Passing the culvert once again. This took just close to show you how busy roundabout this is. It's a roundabout right in the centre, which is the focal point for everybody coming. That just building just on the left there, the nearest where the white wagon is, is what used to be the Mecca. So many happy times in there. <laughs> Grab a granny at two o'clock. Yeah, been interesting. Yeah, it's a fascinating place. And the key of it seems to have stood there since time immortal. And right there on the right is where the Audion used to be. And buried here in the banking on the canal is some old signage from the old Audion. That's a tree we used to climb up years ago when it was a lot smaller. Bloody hell, how time passes. Things seem to be changing so much, even on here, which is relatively peaceful. A lot of the streets surrounding it and in rural areas having these poles put up, they look like the old fashioned telegraph poles, but they're not. They're ready for the new 6G. Why the God in God's name do we need 6G? It looks like they're going to bring 
most of the connections back up above ground untidy as it is because it's cheaper to maintain easier to get to it's quite worrying really because where I live they've already done the estate uh, and they're very frequent they're all over the damn place toodle pit for now